Hi, my name is Beth Ranestis, and welcome to Puppets and Props. I'm filming this in my house, as you can tell, and so you'll occasionally see a cat's tail, and you'll probably hear my granddaughter in the background, who's just a little over a year, and she's very interested in what I'm doing. But I'm going to be doing a little talk about using puppets and using props in your story times. I'm a very active storyteller, which means when I do stories, I integrate stuffed animals and different types of things, finger puppets, um, I use larger puppets, but I never use puppets and props for reading the book actually, because that distracts the kids that you're presenting to, and that's a problem. So always use the story as the centerpiece and the props and puppets as kind of a supplement. Now, I want to introduce you to Sparky. This is my dragon, and he's a baby dragon. And Sparky is very special because he helps me start every story time I do. And I usually do story times for babies all the way up through about, oh, first grade. And then on family days, we have kids just come as a whole family, and we have, you know, junior high, middle school kids all the way down to little babies that were just born. So, Sparky, say hi. Now, the kids before story time starts, most of the kids that come to story time know Sparky. So, Sparky's out. Um, everything else you see here, I do set it up, but it's like behind me. I never ever have stuff in front of me because that just encourages kids to come up and want to touch. I always let the kids touch whatever stuffed animals I have after story time. So Sparky will be demonstrating the story time in part two with me, but right now I just wanted to introduce him. He's a big puppet, he's got wings, and his head turns so that you can kind of talk to him and he can look down at the kids. And I'll basically do things like, what story are we reading today? What? What? Oh, it's over there? Are we doing bear snores on today? <gasps> We're going to be doing bear snores on. And so he actually says hi to the kids during baby story time. I, I actually put him on the floor more like this because I sit on the floor with babies. And I shouldn't have bent over, but I actually sit on the floor. And he'll sit on the floor with me. And we always do a circle with baby story time. And it's amazing. The babies aren't afraid of him. So it's pretty fun. This is my other bear. I have lots of bears. I'm a, I'm a real bear person. This is Morris. He's my bear. And this was made by a very, very talented librarian who is also a storyteller. And this bear has all moving parts. He can just bend and turn and twist. And he can stand up. And what I really like about him is that you can set him on your knee and he can look. So sometimes I will just have him sitting in the chair next to me when I read a story. So he's not uh, in the story, he's not moving around and being distracted. It's kind of like he's reading and I model him that he's sitting very quietly and he's listening to the story. So that's another type, another type of, of bear. And that's my granddaughter Lorelai in the background. Alright, you all know about hand puppets. They're so fun. This is a piggy puppet. And again, I like these puppets because you can have one or two on your hands. The kids aren't afraid of them because they're little. And you can do great stories that you can memorize, little stories that you can have different can puppets play with you. This happens to be my pig. I've got a giraffe and a lion and an alligator. I'm going to keep piling these up here. Now, there's all kinds of finger puppets, and I just happen to really like animals. So on days that we do animals, or we're doing particular stories, I will either have the kids sit down on the floor, and we'll go through, and I have big fat fingers, so it takes me a long time, but I talk about the animals as I put them on. And then we'll play Identify the Animals. And I usually will put all ten on. I've got an elephant. I'm going to put my elephant on. 
And finger puppets can go with songs, they can go with rhymes, or they can go with just a, le you know, a little story that you're going to tell, or just some vocabulary building. So here's an elephant. What noise does the elephant make? Do you know the sign for elephant? And then you'll usually have kids just yell out stuff, and then you want to be able to say, elephant, elephant. And so just, there's all kinds of little creative things that you can do. Here's a lion, and a bear, and a frog. And speaking of frogs, we'll put these finger puppets down, and we'll look at these. Now I'm going to just, these are really tight on your fingers, and as I said, I have fatter fingers, so I'm going to have you imagine that I have all five frogs on my fingers. And one of my favorite songs to sing with the frogs is, five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bug, yum, yum. One jumped into the pond where it was nice as cool. Now there are only four green speckled frogs. And of course you can tell that it goes all the way down to only one green speckled frog. But these are very inexpensive. You can get them at lots of bookstores or you can get them online. You just have to type in finger puppets and all kinds of people online sell finger puppets of all different kinds. You can also get the storyboards, and I don't have a felt board, but you can make your own felt boards and you can make all kinds of things so you don't have to spend money. I've been in a library both where you were able to buy props and then I've been in libraries where you had to, you know, you were basically making them. So let's talk about an inexpensive one that you can buy. And this happens to be for Little Red Riding Hood. Now, one caution before you use these. Depending on the age of the kid, they sometimes don't like to have the storyteller's face covered up. It scares them. So if you get a reaction like that, how I always start the story that I'm going to use the masks for is I basically say to the parents, if your child is afraid of masks, okay, or having someone's face covered up, you might want to just go out to the library for a little bit. This will only take two or three minutes and then you're welcome to come back. Because the worst thing you can do is have a screaming child while you're trying to do the story, which the other kids might enjoy very much. So, here is Little Red Riding Hood. Here's the wolf. <gasps> And here's the wolf's grandma. And guess who this is? This is Little Red Riding Hood. And what I try to do is hold it up as I'm telling the story and just move it here so that it can associate that it's me. And you have, of course, the hunter. And you have the real grandma. So these are four very inexpensive. I think I paid $5 for this. And they have all kinds of stories, fairy tales, that you can get these for. Now, if you want to do baby story time, I love to use musical instruments. But if you can't afford them, you may not be able to give the babies to play with them. But you can make, you can make, I made this very cheaply. It is a popsicle stick. I cut out out of just a plastic that I bought at the craft store. It's put on with good glue so it, it doesn't come off. I've got some hard white plastic that I cut the little flower out of and a bell. You can get most of this stuff very cheaply. I think this cost me all told maybe 40 cents. So you can basically, at Christmas time, I make actually one that's more Christmassy, couldn't find it, but this one um, can allow you to do all kinds of songs. Babies love songs. So you can basically do um, just about any song that you want to do. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down, London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. And babies really like sound. Now, if you're in a library where you have a budget, you can buy musical instruments that the babies can actually hold. Now, there's a couple of philosophies about this. One, it's unsanitary. I don't go for the unsanitary because I used to wash them after each story time because 
babies love the coordination, they love the sound, and even if they're an infant, their, their mother or their caretaker that's with them, or even dads, we used to have great dad story time, they, or grandparent story time day, they will basically sit there and just listen to it even if the adult is shaking it. So don't be afraid to use things that make noise and play music in your story times. Now this one's a little bit harder to make, but it is really fun. This is made with one fo manila folder that you put a file folder and different colors of construction paper. Pretty, pretty inexpensive. And this is basically called Scat the Cat. And what I usually do when I teach story time, um, you can pull this off the web as well. And I just happened, this just happened to be on a book, and so I traced it and cut it out with an X-Acto knife. So it's a kitty. And I have it, I have it printed out. And actually, my granddaughter is, is being very realistic. That is what you might have during your story time going on. And that's why a lot of people are afraid to use props because they're afraid that the child that's so vocal or, or running around is going to come up. I really enjoy that because I know they can't sit still for very long. So that's why I try to integrate all the stories with props and stuffed animals and d different ways of telling stories. And this is one a different way. This is, and I'm not going to do the whole thing. This is called Scat the Cat. And it's to teach colors. So once there was a little black cat. He was a magic cat because he could change colors just like that. He just had to stay, say, I'm Scat the Cat. I'm sassy and fat. And I can change my colors just like that. One day Scat decided he was tired of being the same color all the time. He wanted to be a new color. So he said, I'm Scat the Cat. I'm sassy and fat, and I can change my colors just like that. And he changed from black to red. Scat's not red anymore. I'm sorry, black anymore. I made a mistake. Storytellers make mistakes. Now, as you can tell, the story keeps going on, and just to, you know, go through the colors, they're, they're basically the ones that you would expect. And you have to usually pull them out one at a time. So red, yellow, blue, green. And this is very, very, very cheap to make. And if I have the time, I will make one for every, I will make like 30 of these up if I'm going to be doing a special kind of story time. I used to do a lot of workshops for parents um, at the library that didn't speak English as their first language and they were new to the area and we would have smaller groups and I, they would actually be sign up so I would know that maybe 20 people were coming and then I would make, make one of these for each one of them. So this is another real valuable way to do it. So the last thing I'm going to talk to you about, and there's, there's a lot of different puppet books. There's a lot of different craft books that you basically just have to follow a pattern and cut things out. There's also a million things that you can buy. Now, the one thing that people always say is, why don't you have marionettes? Well, marionettes are expensive, and they also take an extraordinary amount of talent to use. You usually have to have a theater, a little theater that you can hang them from, and it really takes a lot of talent, a lot of coordination to learn, so I don't have marionettes. But if you ever get the chance to have marionettes um, or have someone you know, uh, come in and do a program, the children just love them. The other um, prop that I use is I always give them a hand stamp, stamp at the end of story time. I usually have two different kinds, and I usually associate it with whatever the theme for that day is. So I have bears and elephants. I have diff all the seasons, like Christmas, um, and I'm sorry, we didn't call it Christmas. We had called it holiday, so I apologize. Um, we had one for Halloween, for, you know, for spring and all that. So what we did was say, now at the end of story time, everybody that wants their hand stamped, come on up, and that's when you can meet all the animals. And I would literally, you know, except for Morris because he's, you know, he's very special.